the old Montauk, it's gone. If we don't put our money into the future, we might as well just, just lay down in the middle of the road and let the summer people drive all over us. It's basically what we're doing here. Montauk, on the far end of New York's Long Island, has a well-earned reputation as a summer retreat for New York's elite. But as that clip from the Showtime series The Affair shows, it's also long been home to working class residents who live there year round. That contrast is the setting for a tragic tale told in a new book. And Anthony Mason is here with the story. Anthony, good morning. Good morning. And The Lost Boys of Montauk, published by Simon & Schuster, a division of Viacom CBS. Author Amanda Fairbanks traces the evolution of eastern Long Island, from a land of blue-collar fishing villages to what it's become today. At the heart of her story are four commercial fishermen from vastly different backgrounds who shared a tragic fate, lost at sea together more than 30 years ago. So the windblown would have come out from here? Yes, exactly. And this would have been probably her fourth or fifth voyage. On a cold March day in 1984, a 65-foot fishing trawler headed out of Montauk Harbor. The windblown was charting a course to catch tilefish, heading from the tip of Long Island, 120 miles offshore, out near the continental shelf. But after a week at sea, author Amanda Fairbanks says, an ominous storm stirred suddenly in the Atlantic. What was the weather out here like that day? It was literally an unforecasted hurricane. The east coast of the United States is reeling today from the biggest storm in recent history. The freak nor'easter would cause a freighter to run aground on Cape Cod and topple the Nantucket lighthouse. The crew of the windblown met an even darker fate. There was never a mayday call. They just vanished. On board were Captain Mike Stedman, a father of three. He was the son of a Harvard-educated United Nations diplomat. Dave Connick, the 22-year-old son of a prominent New York lawyer. Mike Vigilant, a 19-year-old dock rat whose father had died at sea in a fishing accident. And Scott Clark, at 18, he was the youngest. He was the youngest. And he in Fairbanks' book, they are the lost boys of Montauk. They were last had radio contact about a dozen miles from Montauk Point. Off the lighthouse here. Off the lighthouse in between Block Island and the lighthouse. That's where Captain Mike put his location on the morning of March 29th, 1984. And he sounded quite panicked and worried. Um, and he told his friend to please tell Mary, his wife, that he loved her. And that was the last time that anyone would ever hear his voice again. Fishermen feared lost, the East Hampton Star reported in a front page story after the storm. So it says they found a life raft, paddles inscribed with, with the name of the wind blown, clothing, debris, the boat's plywood wheelhouse, mm -hmm. but no sign of the men or the boat steel hull. Right. How big a deal was it when that boat disappeared? The wind blown's loss was paralyzing. David Rattray is the editor of the East Hampton Star. For those of us who grew up during that time, you know, if you go out around Montauk Point, uh, you think about it, you know. Out at the end of Long Island, beyond the glitzy Hamptons, Montauk has long been a commercial fishing hub. How hard did that hit this town? They were die hard, strong, eager, young fishermen that wanted to make an honest living. Yeah, yeah. The town took it hard. Henry Uline went out to search for the missing crew back in 84. You knew Captain Mike? Yes. What kind of guy was he? Excellent fisherman. Yeah. Not a daredevil, not one to take chances. Yeah. Certainly not stupid. He had a lesser opinion narrow, of the wind blown itself. It was just top heavy. Originally built as the party boat Captain Scotty, Mike Stedman had bought it in Texas and sailed it to Montauk, where he modified it. This is the boat's propeller. Uh, yes, this was the propeller that was... Morgan uh, McGivern has some rare artifacts. This is the wind blown uh, a month before it sank. This is the only picture of the boat? It, that anyone knows of, yeah. McGivern was friends with Captain Mike and Dave Connick. Is this something you think about a lot? Uh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Dave was 
your best friend. Uh, Dave was my closest friend as a child, and he took to fishing, you know, like a disease, and then he uh, was fishing <laughs> pretty much all the time. He was an adventurer. He occasionally used to climb to the, um, and stand on the chimney right up the side of the house. On the house? Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds would turn out for the memorial service at Most Holy Trinity Church in East Hampton. Donovan's song, Atlantis, was played at its conclusion. Way down below the ocean. For the families, the grief would be overwhelming and enduring. Maud Vigilant continued to believe her son was alive. She did, and, and Donna Llewellyn did too. She had worked for TWA Airlines yeah. and would spend the latter part of her life traveling to South America or the Caribbean or Florida or getting in her car and taking a road trip. And in hopes of up, finding her son. And putting up signs, missing signs for her son. And I'll never, you know, as a mother, I'll never, I'll never stop thinking about that. In 1999, a monument to lost sailors was unveiled on Montauk Point. The windblown's crew is named on it. But the boat itself is still out there, somewhere. You talked about yeah, the vanishing aspect. the vanishing aspect. aspect. And the, I, I think the wreck has so much to do with the vanishing aspect, yeah. because there is this lack of closure. There, the bodies were never located. The whole of the boat was never found. People around here still think about that day? It crosses my mind. Whenever I walk down this dock, on, if it's windy, I always think of that day. Yeah. And I miss Mike, but it's life. <laughs>